Support for this project is provided by Total Boat. Find tools and inspiration for craftsmen at TotalBoat.com. Hi everyone and welcome back to the shop. I'm calling this project a Japanese inspired square coffee table because that's what it looks like to me. The tapered shape from the top down along with the flared out tabletop always reminds me of Japanese architecture. If you want to build this project, I do have plans on my website and I'll have a link in the description below. And the plans along with this detailed video make this a very easy project to make. The table is made with genuine mahogany and the boards were sent to me by the woodworker's source. If you didn't know, you can buy lumber online. So if you don't have a good lumber yard close by or a friendly lumber yard with good selection, definitely check them out. Let's get started on this project by making the legs. To make the legs, I'll cross cut the boards to length a little heavy and that'll make them easier to run through the table saw. Next, I'll rip the boards to width, again a little heavy. I can cut them to size after the glue up. Because we're going to use this table outdoors, I'm gluing the legs together with Type On 3. If you plan to use your table indoors, you can use Type On 2. Once I've got the legs in the clamps but not clamped too tight, I'll put a pair of coals at each end and that'll keep the boards aligned during the glue up. The coals are made of 3 quarter inch plywood with packing tape around the edges to prevent the wood glue from sticking to them. Now that I have the legs glued together, I'll get to work on the top. These boards were shipped to me in two boxes. They're roughly 6 feet long. Some of them are 73 inches, some of them are 72 inches. And my wife wants a square coffee table, so I suggested a 35 inch square coffee table. And of course, she said, I'd rather have a 38 inch square coffee table. So then I said, I probably won't have enough material for it then. So we're gonna do a 35 inch square coffee table because then I can just cut the boards in half at 36 inches. That'll give me enough room to clean up the edge if I have to. I don't really see any checking, but just to clean off the, the painted edge. So rough cut to length, clean up the edges, and then join the boards together. These boards were sent to me with a straight line rip on one side, so no need for the jointer. I can simply cut the boards a little heavy, then move the fence in a bit, flip the boards, and clean up the factory edge. I've taken a few minutes to set the boards up in the order that they'll be joined together. I've got the center cut where I cut the boards in half all on the left side. The ends are all on the right side. That way if there's any checks or imperfections, they'll be cut away. I'm using a domino just about every nine or 10 inches. The dominoes will add strength to the joint and they'll also keep the boards aligned during the glue up. I'm using dominoes on this top again because this is going to be an outdoor piece of furniture and the dominoes will add strength to the joint. But if you're making this table for inside, go ahead and use the biscuit joiner to help join the boards. And I say help join the boards because the biscuits really don't add any strength to the joint, but they definitely do help to keep the boards aligned during the glue up. For outdoor tabletops, I really like Total Boat's Thixo Epoxy. It's proven itself on a few projects, the table out by the grill, the table that I most recently made that's down on the Jersey Shore, and as you can see, I just took the old tip off. Last time I used this, you just keep the old tip on. And as you can see, it's hardened at the tip, but it's still soft and unmixed at the end here. So I've taken the old tip off. I'll put an old, a new tip back on and it's good to go. So you don't have to worry if you don't use the whole tube. It really comes down to just changing the tip. When you use this, 
put down maybe a two or three inch bead before you start to use it on your project just to make sure that it's totally mixed in the mixing tip. I'll apply the epoxy to both boards and make sure it's evenly spread. It's also a good idea to put painter's tape on the bottom clamps and that will prevent the epoxy from sticking to the clamps. I've let the epoxy set up overnight and now I can take the top out of the clamps, give it a good sanding and cut it to size. If you're enjoying this project and thinking about building this table for your home, I'd like to suggest a few more. The first one is the cherry entrance table. I think it's a very elegant looking piece of furniture, but at the same time, kind of an introduction to woodworking project because it is made with pocket hole joinery. If you like the cherry entrance table, chances are you'll like the cherry end table because they are a matching set. And with the holidays so close, Maybe the blanket chest is something that you want to build for someone special in your life. I built it for my daughter years ago. She still uses it today. And one day when she leaves, I'm sure she'll take it with her. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description below. Check out the project plans. They all have very helpful YouTube tutorials right here on YouTube. And uh, again, I'll have links in the description below. Let's go ahead and get back to work on this table. Now that I have the top glued up and cut to size, I'll get back to work on the table legs. Before tapering the legs, I want to start with a two and a half by two and a half inch blank. So when I ripped the boards, I ripped them at two and three quarters, and that gives me a blank now that measures two and three quarters by two and five eighths. Because I used the coals during the glue up, I don't need to run this over the jointer. Of course, if I've got some high spots of glue, I'll remove them with a chisel. But as long as I can have the legs sit nicely against the fence, I can clean a little off this side, then bring the fence in, clean a little off the next side, and ultimately run the leg through the table saw until I have a two and a half by two and a half inch leg. I've squared up one side of all four legs and then set up a stop block to cut all the legs to length. For this table, I'm cutting the taper on the two outside sides of the leg. With the blade raised all the way up, I'm just able to cut the taper in this two and a half inch leg plus the half inch tapering jig. I've set the jig at two inches for the top of the leg, just about flush for the bottom of the leg. With the leg clamped in position, I'll cut the first taper, then rotate the leg, clamp it back in position, and cut the second taper. As a reminder, I draw an O on the side that I just tapered, and I'll do the same thing, draw an O on the next tapered cut. And that reminds me that that is the outside of the leg when I'm assembling the table. Now that I have all the legs cut to size and tapered, the next step is to cut the aprons. And since this table is a square, I'll need four pieces, 
all the same size. I'll use the miter saw to rough cut the boards to length, then over at the table saw I'll rip the boards to width, then back at the miter saw I'll square up one side of each board, set up a stop block, and cut all the boards to their final measurement. Now that I have the aprons cut to size, I'll use the Armor Tool Auto Jig to drill three evenly spaced holes on the insides of the apron. I've made sure that the taper is facing the outside, the square is facing the inside. I'm using a piece of half inch plywood as a spacer. I'm nice and flush with the top. And I'm using inch and a half long screws and these are the fine threaded screws and these are meant to be used in hard woods. With the bottom and top screw in position I can remove the clamp and get the center screw. Now I can flip the half of an apron over, or whatever you'd like to call this. Make sure that the circle which indicates the taper is facing the outside. And let's see how that's gonna work. Just like that. So I've got the taper on the outside here and here. This piece will go here. And I've set this clamp up to fit with the leg because of course it's going to be about two inches longer and I'll get this in position use the same half inch spacer and attach the apron to the leg with the inch and a half long pocket hole screws. Okay, well now the table is starting to take shape and I didn't use any glue because I just didn't feel that it would add that much to the joint. It's end grain to long grain and the inch and a half pocket hole screws I think will be more than enough. The next step is to use this massive router bit to cut what's called a table edge or a thumbnail table edge profile in the bottom of the top. I'm cutting it in the bottom of the top because I want that, that kind of feel where the base goes like this and then the top kind of kicks out, if that makes any sense. So let's go outside and do this because this is going to make a ton of sawdust. I'm going to cut this profile in two passes just because it's a lot of material to remove. And I'll make the first pass on the cross grain and that way if there's any chipping or tear out, I should be able to clean it up when I cut the profile on the long grain. Because this is an outdoor table, I'm using a straight edge to cut a drip edge in the bottom of the table top an inch and a half in from the edge. The drip edge will prevent water from rolling under the table. The water will hit the drip edge and fall to the ground. Next, I'll use a small chamfer at the bottom of the table legs, and this should prevent any tear out or chipping if the table is slid along the floor. While I have the table out here, I'll use the biscuit joiner to cut slots at the top of the apron, and this will come into play later when I attach the table top with wooden clips that I'll make in the shop. To finish this table, I'm using Total Boat's Gleam Spar Varnish. I'll apply four coats of the gloss, sanding in between coats, and then a final coat of satin. 
With this bar varnish, if you want a satin finish, you still need to apply at least four coats of the gloss first. I've let the finish cure for a few days, and now I can attach the top to the table base. Okay, well that's about all there is to it. Another piece of furniture finished and added to the channel and the website. And that's really what I'm trying to do now is to create almost a line of furniture to help people build furniture for their home. That's really exciting to me. I think building furniture really isn't that difficult, especially when you're using pocket hole screws and simple joinery like that. And it often comes down to just a few simple design decisions that can make a piece or like make or break a piece. And I think what makes this piece is cutting the profile in the bottom of the top. It gives you this kind of elegant look with a thinner edge here and also tapering the legs from the top down. So very simple, but at the same time, I think it works. And I think that this table would look good in any home. A few things that I wanted to mention, the three router bits that I used on this table, I'll have links to them in the description below. The clips that I used to attach the top. I have a separate video on how to make those, very simple. And I'll put a link to that video down below. And I did use nylon glides at the bottom of the leg to elevate the leg just a little bit off the ground because this table is going to be outside for maybe three quarters of the year. And just lifting it off the ground a little bit like that will create a barrier and prevent water from sucking up through the end grain of the leg. Even though the legs are sealed with spar varnish, that's just one more precaution. So I think that's it. Again, if you do want to build this project, there are plans on my website. I'll have a link to that down below. Uh, that's it for now. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.